here. Here. And here. Etienne Sarre was filming her documentary, World Trade Center, the first 24 hours, and caught both collapses on tape. Watch carefully. The tripod shakes 12 seconds before the North Tower begins collapsing. And something is knocked off the right-hand side of the building. to sit down with Britain's Queen Elizabeth for a family photograph. All going well, all pretty formal. But as they relax at the end, Italy's Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi can be heard to call out Obama. The Queen seems to be not amused. The sound quality is blurred, but she seems to say, what is it? Why does he need to shout? It's worth listening again. The clip has become a YouTube sensation, attracting hundreds of comments hours after it was posted. Buckingham Palace was quick to... the home of the uh, very advanced culture going back to 4000 BC uh, down to around 2000 BC of Sumer. Babylon was a ancient headquarters of this Illuminati. Um, like I said, and that's as we go through, these Illuminati today use a tremendous amount of Babylonian symbolism in their own uh, codes and language. This is the area I'm talking about. Egypt came into it as well. Also this also showed area was up. Mm -hmm. um, families um, exported themselves out into Europe, where they became the aristocracy of Europe and the royal families of Europe. When uh, you go back to Babylon, you find that they worshipped the trinity of Nimrod, the father, who they symbolize as a fish, Ninos Tamos, the son, Queen Samiramis, um, the Romans used to worship Queen Samiramis under the term Venus Columba, Venus the Dove, because the Babylonians used to symbolize Samiramis as a dove. Hey, in French, the word for dove is Columba. So Columbus was a play on Columba, the goddess Samiramis, as portrayed on an, an ancient coin. I've seen her somewhere before. And one of the great front men for the Illuminati in the 20th century, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, put it on the dollar bill, the same symbol. Skull and Bones is a springboard uh, for a young man to be brought in, trained, conditioned, imbued with these doctrines. William Howard Taft, George Bush, George W. Bush, numerous senators and ambassadors, industrialists like William Whitney, CIA agents, State Department officials, and the publishing magnate 
can be loose. Hundreds of secret societies operating in the United States, there are a few whose names appear frequently. They are the Freemasons, Skull and Bones, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and the most secretive of all, Bilderberg and its most powerful members with elites from North America, Western Europe, and Japan to form a new 180-member group. It is called the Trilateral Commission. Much of the 50 billion, which is more than the annual budget of the Department of Homeland Security, has been handed out to companies in Iraq with little or no oversight. Billions of dollars are unaccounted for, and there are widespread allegations of waste, fraud, and war profiteering. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. And when it was in Rome, that's when we had the creation of the Roman Empire and the creation of the Roman Church that became uh, Christianity as we know it. I just want to pick um, um, three secret societies up that were formed around the time of the Crusades. In the 1100s they were formed and grew into the 1200s. One of them was called the Teutonic Knights. Another one, the Knights Hospitaller of St. John of Jerusalem. This crusade massive sweeping in history was actually orchestrated by a secret brotherhood, the Priory of Sion and the Knights Templar. In the 19th century, um, artifacts and, and uh, things were found, signs were found that the Templars had been under Temple Mount. Whatever, something changed very quickly after around nine years because a couple of these guys came back to France and started signing up the aristocratic families of Europe. They clearly knew something big time. The papacy declared these Priory Knights, these Knights Templar, of limitless power. By the 1300s, the Templars had grown to the power. All across Europe, the Pope had declared the Knights Templar saint worshippers, said God had charged him with cleansing the earth of these heretics. The plan went off like clockwork. The Templars were all but exterminated. The day 13th, 1307, Friday. Friday the 13th. And they went runabout. They almost certainly went to the Americas because the knowledge of the Americas existed and goes back a long way in the secret um, uh, knowledge line. And very quickly they establish a membership role of prestigious colonists. Of the 56 signatories of the American Declaration of Independence, 50 were known Freemasons, only one was known not to be. George Washington's first inauguration in 1789 was a Freemasonic ritual. Look at the pictures. A Freemason in Bavaria by the name of Adam Weishaupt forms a secret society known as the Order of the Illuminati. Charles Taze Russell, who created the uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, movement, along with others, uh, Merovingian bloodline buried under a, a pyramid in America. Now, Joseph Smith, who started the Mormon Church, which is an Illuminati front, big time in Salt Lake City, Merovingian bloodline. The guy who took him young, Merovingian bloodline. The Book of Mormon says, and there's a quote here, that there was a blackness that came upon all the children of Canaan, that they were despised among all people. What does that mean? We believe that the blacks are the descendants of Cain that uh, the, the darkness was a curse that God placed upon them for the murder of Abel. But Ariel, to say that black people are cursed, that sounds racist. Perhaps it does. What can I say? I, I can't say things according to how one might interpret my response. I, I can't change the doctrines that Joseph Smith taught because those are unpopular today. Armed guards protect a secret meeting of the world's power elite. At Yale University, the scions of America's first families confess their sexual exploits from a gruesome coffin. In a smoke-filled room, a handful of power brokers manipulate economy. On May 14, 1948, the state of Israel is reborn. Personally, I do not believe that the Bible addresses such issues as the formation of the modern state of Israel. Interpret for me, please. This symbol, first thing that comes to mind, anybody. Hatred, racism, Hitler, Yes, yes, interesting. But they would disagree with you in Spain. There they are robes worn by priests. We still will not mix up with a bunch of black savages. I'm not one of these free love niggas. They were brought here as slaves. God, nigga, the clan is getting bigger. What power? What power? What power? 
symbolizes fascism comes out of the Roman Empire because these rods symbolize individuality tied together, ruled by the axe head here. You still don't get it, do you boys? There ain't no countries anymore. No more good guys. Go. They own everything, the whole goddamn planet. They can do whatever they want. What's wrong with having it good for a change? And they're going to let us have it good if we just help them. They're going to leave us alone. Let us make some money. You can have a little taste of that good life, too. Now, I know you want it. Hell, everybody does. You do it to your own kind. What's the threat? We all sell out every day. Might as well be on the winning team. Satan's greatest trick was convincing man he didn't exist. 